Welcome to um, a new challenge because although this um, uh, this tutorial is called uh, how I create night scene backgrounds I will now start with coloring this tiger because um, I I like to to build the the entire drawing uh, simultaneously. So I know there are many artists who just finish the background first and then do the rest of the the drawing or the painting, but that doesn't work for me. So I will now start with the tiger. And because uh, tigers have very distinctive colors, the orange, brownish color and the black, I think the color has a great impact on how the background works. So I think that once this tiger has some first color, it will be clear how I should uh, continue coloring the background and the forefront also. I am not so experienced with uh, coloring and painting animals, so I went searching for some reference and I found uh, this book of my favorite Dutch painter Rien Portvliet. I had this uh, book, I've had it for years and uh, I uh, occasionally pick it up and just start looking in it and look at this page number one this is really going to help me and this book is about Noah's Ark and the painter being Portfleet he was a devoted Christian and he had great imagination so he was thinking well how would it look like a flooded earth and how would all these animals uh, be stuck in the in that boat in that ark here a sketch of the ark and in this book he also shows uh, paintings of uh, well, this is Dutch, Dutch forest. Here we have a lion sketch, gorgeous. But I am looking for tigers. This is how Rien imagined that uh, the ark was built. Really nice. He thought, well, maybe an elephant uh, did some work. <laughs> and I found this in the book. Gorgeous sketches of a tiger. And this will really help me to determine how to color this uh, beautiful tiger in Magical Jungle. And look at this. Ooh. <laughs> Glorious. And I found another book that I wasn't aware of that it was in our in, on our bookshelf Encyclopedia of the Animal World and uh, this says well all all animals that have bones in them I, I, I don't know how to uh, all animals that have bones in them. So, look, and this is a book with all sketches of endless amounts of animals. The Tasmanian devil. Don't you love it? Here. 
So there are many animals from all over the world. Here, mice. Bats. And the glorious thing for me is that they are... The, these are drawn, the, these are drawings and paintings. And that helps me a lot to determine how to paint and draw and color animals. Look at that. All sorts of monkeys. Badgers. Now, here the cats are coming, so we are getting close. So, there's the tiger. Ooh, this is an angry tiger. But it is becoming very clear to me how this tiger, which colors I can use and... So, um... I will keep this uh, book uh, close to me. Now I'm going to use uh, several warm yellow, orangish, brownish colors just to give this tiger a first touch of color. And um, my first color is this one, Natural Sienna. From the Brownsville series and I will just add a little touch of color here and there and uh, this will help me to uh, determine how to proceed with this uh, drawing, which colors I should use for the background, but also which colors I can use for the tiger. Now the belly of the tiger has uh, white in it, so I keep it a little bit uh, and it the, its breast has a lot of white in it as well. So I need to keep that in mind. I have done some uh, research on the internet on tigers. I knew there were several species, but uh, there are more species than I thought there were. Now when you are coloring an animal with fur, it can help to put your strokes in the direction of the fur. So in this case, when I'm uh, coloring the nose, the hairs on the tiger's nose 
the face like this. So if you follow that direction, that will help you to give the tiger a um, more natural look, if you would want that. I haven't had a lot of time to color the last couple of days, so that is why there weren't any uh, videos online, new videos. Last week um, there was, uh, was a birthday and there was family coming over from uh, abroad, so... Uh, that was all very, very nice, but uh, no time, uh, little time for coloring. Now, in my uh, reference pictures in the books, the markings on the tail are a little bit different from this, but let's see if I can uh, leave it the way Joanna drew it, but you know sometimes I just have to change little things because it uh, it satisfies me more than, don't ask me why, just ease. So, this is what the tiger looks like right now. And now I'm going to use a slightly darker color with a more red tone in it. I thought I would go for a more reddish color, but I decided to pick this one, Brown Ochre, also by Ranzel Design. And let's see what this is. I think this is good for now. I will not cover the complete tiger with this color. Now when I'm looking at my reference pictures, I can see that the hairs on the back of the tiger go like this. They don't go like this, but more like this. So, I will give my strokes that direction and here down at the belly the hairs go more like this so they will gradually turn a little bit as we move upwards to its back.
this uh, takes uh, some concentration for me because I don't do this uh, very often but it is very nice to uh, explore something new I read on the internet that um, tigers are, uh, I knew already that they were extremely rare, but uh, especially the, uh, the tigers in Russia and, uh, well, what would used to be Russia and uh, China, they are all very, very rare. I will now start using this one, dark cadmium orange, because I want the fur to have a little bit more warmth and that will help the tiger to stand out from the background. The background is uh, pretty cool with all the blue, brown and green colors. The area around the eye, I will leave it white for now because there is white around the eye and I want to be sure that I do it properly. The uh, Olympic Games have started and um, I haven't seen very much of it but uh, I always like the Olympic Games and I just saw a little bit on TV beach volleyball on the Copacabana and um, it was a um, a match between uh, Venezuela and the Dutch team and uh, the Dutch won 
but uh, during that match they also showed a little bit about um, the surrounding area about the beach, the beach and uh, there was a beautiful beautiful bird a heron some sort of heron and those mountains in uh, Brazil are it looks beautiful I hope um, they will show more of the nature the, the environment in uh, Brazil I know it is a sports event but uh, I'm really curious uh, about that country and it is a great coloring country as well many uh, people love coloring in Brazil and great great colorists from Brazil post their work on the internet so let's uh, take a step back and see where things are going this is just the first two layers so I can make mistakes no problem at all but I will just uh, continue with this uh, dark cadmium orange let's add a little bit of orange to the tail Large animals like tigers do not exist in the Netherlands. A long, long time ago there were bears and wolves. And maybe there, was, or there has been a tiger or a lion. But... Um, that is uh, that is not no more but fortunately the wolves are coming back they are uh, doing very well in Germany and last year we had uh, a German wolf visiting uh, the northern uh, northern part of um, the Netherlands I am now going to use this one, Havana Brown, also Brownzeel. So last year we had a, uh, a wolf visiting. And um, a couple of months ago a camera trap in one of the forested areas in the Netherlands caught a uh, jackal it was a jackal and that was very surprising nobody knows where it came from but uh, where it went And in the southern part of the Netherlands we uh, have some uh, wild cats and um, I believe there is a bobcat, a lynx somewhere, but it is all very, uh, very few animals. It's really, it's really pathetic compared to uh, Africa or Asia or the Americas
But of course, uh, Europe has been uh, there. Have a lot of people have lived uh, in Europe for the last, well, let's say at least a thousand years. So slowly, the animals that were uh, competing. They um, they died out. But there are a lot of programs in Europe to restore wildlife populations. So in the Alps, there are slowly um, there is an increase in the amount of wolves and bears also. And of course, not everybody is happy with these uh, large, dangerous animals. And I can uh, understand. But it would be great if we, uh, the Europeans would uh, find a way to um, restore these animals populations and then um, learn to live with them. Look at that. This is going somewhere. I will now add a little bit more color to the background again. And I'm going to use this one, Karandash Prussian Blue. This is a luminance pencil. I recently had a report of someone telling me that the Marco Renoir pencils, and I already have been talking about them, that they are identical to the Brownsville pencils and yesterday someone else told me exactly the same story and I am getting very curious so now I am seriously considering ordering a set and see if that is true because if that is true, uh, you know, Brownsill isn't easily available all over the world. So if it is true that Marco Renoir is similar, then I can advise you, if you wish, to buy Marco Renoir instead of Brownsill. And another thing is that it seems like the Marco Renoirs are less expensive than the Brownsills. 
and there are more colors. But I'm so used to have a hundred colors, I have that set, but they do not sell that large set anymore. And now you can order 48 colors and then there are some, I believe there are some colors, extra colors that you can order. But in some areas in the world, Brunzel is pretty expensive. So what if Marco Renoir is a better option? Well, the sun is shining. We haven't seen the sun uh, yet today. The temperature is pretty nice, 24 degrees Celsius. But it was heavily, heavily clouded with a little bit of rain. But it seems that uh, the clouds are, are leaving. This is Delft blue. So I hope if the sun will stay for a while, then I can go out in the garden and uh, enjoy some sunshine. Now I won't use this Delft Blue close to the tiger because there is a lot of warmth in this color. It is almost purple, so there is red in it. And uh, that could prevent the tiger from popping out of the background. You know, red colors, warm colors always tend to, to feel like they are closer to you. And that will help to pop, to make the colors pop. So I will now go for this one, Payne's Grey, for the background. And Payne's Grey is very versatile. It is like a chameleon. It needed a sharper point, so I gave it a sharper point. If you want to know what uh, kind of pencil sharpener I am using, there is a video I made a couple of weeks ago about uh, my pencil sharpeners, because uh, many people are asking for that. And it is a very, very simple sharpener. Now with these ears, I need to be careful with the background because if I make the background darker here, um, I might get into trouble with the ears because the ears will eventually have a dark black spot over here. So I will leave that area for a while. There are 
I don't know how many layers there are on the paper already, but I feel very clearly now that the paper is saturated and it is having a lot of trouble getting more color. So I will definitely not be able to put on 20 layers of color like I could and can do in my uh, secret garden book. That is not going to work here. But uh, that is okay. So let's take a step back. Now I am almost done for today, but there is one thing that I am going to do and uh, I have to warn you, not everybody will like this, but when I looked at this page and at this tiger, I kept thinking there is something wrong with this tiger, but I don't know what. What is wrong? Something is off. And now I know the pupils. If you have a cat as a pet, you know that the pupils have this shape with the points. But a tiger doesn't have that. A tiger has round pupils. And call it my... Well... Maybe it is some, some sort of autism, but I cannot handle this. This tiger needs round pupils. So I am doing exactly the same as I was doing in Enchanted Forest with that beautiful door. I will give this animal round pupils. So I am using gouache. It's a white paint. And this needs to dry and then uh, I hope I can uh, fix it. So at this point this beautiful tiger has no pupils at all and uh, I will now have the paint give it some time to dry and then next time uh, well let's see let's see if this uh, small change is uh, an improvement or not so I hope you liked it and uh, well I, uh, I did as always and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.